Adonis Stevenson becomes the first man to ever stop Tavoris Cloud. He wins the fight via 7th round TKO. Tavoris Cloud failed to answer the bell for the 8th round. His corner decided to pull him out. He had cuts over both eyes. He was getting beaten up. He'd lost every round. And uh, that was all she wrote. I thought it was a good, solid performance by Stevenson. Cloud, he did what I expected him to do. He tried to apply educated pressure. He tried to keep his defense tight. He showed that good chin again. Even though he was stopped, he was never down. Yeah, he was never down in the fight. And he was never really that close to going down. He was rocked a couple of times, but he was never on rubbery legs. There was never any point in the fight where it looked like he was literally on the verge of getting, you know, dropped to the canvas. Uh, he showed a very solid chin, took some big shots and kept trying to come forward. But he was scared to let his right hand go. He was trying to go with a jab and a left hook. He didn't really want to let, it, let his right hand go most of the time because Stevenson was so sharp with that big left hand. And um, Stevenson just did what he does. You know, he boxed pretty much the same way he boxed against Don George. He was moving around. He was, you know, throwing that left hand in there, pulling with his right jab. You know, Stevenson don't really have much of a right jab. Uh, some southpaws like <coughs> Chad Dawson, for example, at light heavyweight, have a better jab. They don't just pull with it. They, they do actually stick the jab with a bit of, you know, a bit of uh, mustard on it. But Stevenson tends to pull, pull with the jab, uh, similar to uh, Guillermo Rigondeau, actually. He pulls with the jab and he just tries to set up the big left hand. Yeah, that's Stevenson's whole style. And, um, you know, some, some people could say it's a little bit one dimensional that he's a bit one handed, but at the end of the day, it's still working for him. You know, it's still working for him so far. No one apart from Daniel Boone with a, a one punch knockout has managed to solve the Stevenson puzzle so far. And Stevenson's boxing skills have definitely improved. You know, I saw in the Don George fight that he did have, uh, you know, some boxing ability, but he hadn't done it at the highest level. This again was a higher level than Don George. Uh, and he did show that, you know, even in world class, he can actually outbox people. Now, that don't mean he can outbox someone like Bernard Hopkins. That remains to be seen. But he can outbox some people at world level. So he does have pretty good boxing skills. That, you know, that's without a doubt now. And after the fight, Stevenson says he wants, like I say, he wants Hopkins. You know, I don't know, man. I think the Hopkins thing is a bit of a poison chalice. You know, everyone wants Hopkins until they get in the ring with him. <laughs> you know, Hopkins just finds a way to make everyone look bad. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's it's honourable that Cloud wants him. He sees Hopkins as the legend. He sees Hopkins as a man, you know, as the man that are uh, 175 pounds who's been beating people over the last, you know, half a decade or whatever. So, you know, he wants a piece of the action. He wants to be the the guy to go in there and beat Hopkins better than anyone else has ever beat him and maybe stop him that's obviously Stevenson's intention whether or not he can do it I don't know I don't know he is a bit like I say one-handed he's a bit left-hand happy he's always been that way it's nothing new against someone like like Hopkins is that gonna work you tell me you know if that fight gets made we'll talk about it you know as and when it happens but next up for Stevenson is is his mandatory Tony Bellew and I've always said from day one, I think Stevenson beats Bellew. Uh, I always felt from day one, Stevenson would beat Bellew and he would definitely beat Nathan Cleverly. Now, Cleverly's already been taken out by Kovalev. We can forget about him for now. But I do feel like Stevenson will beat Bellew. Um, I give Bellew somewhat of a chance. All right, I do give him somewhat of a chance, but I just feel like Stevenson's reach is going to be a bit too much. You know, I, I talked in my pre-fight video about the difference. Well, I didn't actually talk about the difference, but I, I highlighted that there is a difference between reach and arm length. And Stevenson's arm length, rather than his reach, I think is going to be a bit too much for Tony Bellew. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bit too much. I think he will be able to keep Bellew at the end of his shots, despite the fact Bellew's taller. And um, I think he will be able to land that left hand down the pipe. I think Bellew's body will be even more open to big punches than Cloud's was, you know, the, the body shots were what, what was really hurting Tavoris Cloud, there was one round in particular, um, Stevenson landed a big left hand to the body and Cloud just had to go on the retreat, you know, he, he was in serious pain from that shot and uh, Bellew being a taller guy, I think his body's going to be even more vulnerable to that left hand from Adonis Stevenson, so I think Stevenson will win that fight, apparently that fight may even take place this year, 
I hope it does. You know, I'd like to see Stevenson back in action. He's an exciting fighter. Even in a fight like that against Tavoris Cloud, where he was schooling Cloud in there, outboxing him, he still made it exciting by throwing big shots. You know, every time a big shot landed from, from Stevenson, the crowd was like, ooh, you know, ooh's and ahs from the crowd. Every time a shot just missed, you know, it was it was exhilarating and exciting to see them kind of big shots going in. So, yeah, I think I think he'll beat Bellew. I do think he'll beat Bellew. And after that, if he wants Hopkins, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure that's the right way to go, man. I, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know how you feel about that. Do you think that's the right way to go? The one I really want to see, personally, as a boxing fan, and most people are going to say the same thing, I want to see Stevenson against Kovalev. That's what I want to see. The two biggest punches in the division, I want to see that fight happen. Uh, another another possibility is Stevenson could fight the winner of Pascal and Lucien Boutet. That would obviously be a huge fight in Canada. That would make loads of money. Um, I think, you know, that's that's another pretty good fight there. A very viable option. I think Pascal is going to beat Boutte. And, you know, Stevenson, Pascal, hey, I'd like to see it. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see it, man. A battle for supremacy in Canada. I'd like to see that. Um, another thing that people have mentioned is uh, Andre Ward fight possibly. Now, Ward has already got business uh, with uh, Rodriguez at 168. So he's got to get past that first of all. After that, you might be able to see Stevenson against Ward, but uh, Stevenson's going to have to come back down to 168 for the fight because Ward has made it very clear and his trainer has made it very clear numerous times that Ward is not willing to step up to 175 just yet. It's going to be at least a couple years, you know, at least 18 months, two years before Ward is willing to step up to 175. So I don't think that fight is very likely at this particular point. Um, but there's plenty of fights to be made at 175. So it doesn't really matter that, you know, Ward is not interested in moving up upper weight class right now because plenty of guys to fight a light heavyweight. Plenty of guys. So yeah, let me know how you thought about this performance. I thought it was a good, solid victory. First guy to stop Cloud. Uh, drop your comments below. This is Hatman. I'm out.